the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus left the house and sat by the lakeside. But such crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there. The people all stood on the beach, and he told them many things in parables. He said, imagine a sower going out to sow. As he sowed, some seeds fell on the edge of the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Others fell on patches of the rock, where they found little soil and sprang up straight away because there was no depth of hurt. But as soon as the sun came up, they were scorched, and not having any roots, they withered away. Others fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Others fell on the rich soil and produced their crop, some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. Listen, anyone who hears. My brothers and sisters, this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Dear brothers and sisters, <clears throat> I will start this homily meditating with you the beautiful words of the opening prayer. We pray at the beginning of this uh, Eucharistic, our Lord, telling him, O oh Lord, you show us the light of the truth. Give us the grace to reject what is contrary to what we live as Christians and help us to live according to the values of the gospel. Dear brothers and sisters, this Sunday, during this Eucharistic celebration, we pray together the Lord. Lord, help us to reject what is contrary to our faith and help us to live according to your will, to reject and to live according to the gospel. Yes, dear brothers and sisters, because uh, the celebration of the Eucharist on Sundays has to produce some changes in our life. And so this prayer introduced us to the beautiful parable that we just proclaimed in the gospel. We have three elements and four situations. The elements are the sower, the seed, and the soil. The four situations are some seeds fell on the edge of the path. Some seeds fell among the rocks. Some seed fell among the thorns. And some seed fell on the rich soil. My dear brothers and sisters, I do think, I do believe that our heart is like a piece of soil. Your heart is like a piece of soil. And our Lord, you know, is putting a seed in this soil. And so, to which kind of soil we can compare our life? And our Lord is very rarely this. We, of course, uh, proclaim today the shorter form of the gospel. But in the text of the gospel of Matthew, our Lord explains this parable. Very rarely our Lord explains a parable. And he explains this parable because, of course, he would like that we understand correctly the meaning of this parable. So, dear brothers and sisters, the fourth situation, the fourth situation, the seed 
that fell on the edge of the path. So many of our brothers and sisters, so many Christians, no? they leave uh, their faith uh, without being too much involved. No? So the first situation of the seed fell on the edge of the path is uh, the representation of, the, of those Christians who leave their faith uh, with uh, some interest, but not to get too much involved. The second situation is the situation of the seed that fell among the rocks. Of course, uh, this is the situation that sometimes uh, we see in many of our brothers and sisters. They are thinking by joy and by enthusiasm. But unfortunately, there are no roots and uh, these seeds uh, will be taken away by the evil. The third situation, the seeds fell among the thorns. And this situation is a situation of those Christians who are, of course, uh, very serious in practicing their faith. But they are too much attached to the human things they have not the spirit of detachment, and so the thorns, they suffocate, they suffocate the words of the Lord, and so they cannot produce fruit. And then, the fourth situation is the seed fell on the rich soil and produced 30, 60, and 100. My dear brothers and sisters, where we are, where we are, in which of these uh, four situations, because we said that our heart is like a piece of soil, in which of these four situations we are? Are we Christian, like these Christians that uh, they, they believe, but they are not involved? Are we like those Christians that uh, they are full of enthusiasm, but very easily they get upset because maybe they are not very happy with things happening in our church, in our communities. Are we like those Christians that suffocating, suffocating the words of the Lord because they don't want to commit themselves entirely? to God, or we are those that, being the rich soil, we pray that we produce fruit. So dear brothers and sisters, let me pray today with you, Lord, transform my heart in a rich soil. From today, I want to produce fruit. Give me the grace, the grace that my heart, this little piece of soil that is in my heart, may produce. That our heart may belong completely to him. Because, dear brothers and sisters, our Lord wants a life commitment. This is why our Lord explained these parables. Because uh, it's really requiring from the disciples, the apostles at the time and today to all of us, uh, it requires a life commitment. Of course, the enthusiasm is okay. Of course, uh, you know, to start doing something for the church is okay. But our Lord asks a life commitment, and we know that this is sometimes the major difficulty that we sometimes face as Christians. So we pray that we may start to produce, that our piece of soil, the piece of soil of our heart, may start to produce 30, 60, 100. And so, my dear brother and sister, like this we understand better the symphony of the first reading today. Beautiful short passage of the prophet Isaiah. The word 
of the God is like the rain, is like the snow, beautiful image, you know. You cannot go back to the Lord, cannot go back to God without producing some fruit. So that's why our prayer today, you know, rejecting what is contrary, you know, contrary to our faith and asking the grace to live according to the values of the gospel, we pray that we may become a rich soil, that we may start to produce fruit as a community. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, that's why at the beginning of this Mass today, I refer to the fact that, especially Sunday, you know, is the day of the community, a church, you know, who walks together. You know. Because, uh, dear brothers and sisters, very often uh, in our church, some of our institutions, they act like a corporation. We are not a corporation because the corporation, they produce uh, clients. We are a community and the community has to generate disciples. Pope Francis you know, repeats this very often, are not my words, of course, of Pope Francis. You know. We have to be careful, you know, my dear brothers and sisters, that sometimes uh, we act, our institution act like a corporation. No, no, we are not to generate clients. You know. We have to generate disciples. That's why we are called to walk together with all our sins, with all our limits, praying, praying that our Lord may transform our little soil, no, the peace of the soil in our heart in a soil that produces. That's why St. Paul shouts in the second reading today that the entire creation is waiting for the second manifestation of our Lord, that the joy, the glory which we will share one day with our Lord is nothing comparing to the little human satisfaction that we are living today. That's why we have to commit ourselves entirely to the Lord. That's why we have to be full-time Catholics, as I usually repeat. Because to be part-time Catholics means to suffocate the word of the Lord, means to let the bird of uh, heaven of the sin take away the seeds, or let the thorns, you know, or the rocks not produce the fruit. So, dear brothers and sisters, I will conclude with this prayer that as a community, we may feel the light of the truth and the really we may start to produce fruit, this fruit of grace, this fruit of love, this fruit of brotherhood, thinking always that we all are disciples. And as disciples, we are trying to help each other with all our limits, because as I used to repeat very often, my dear brothers and sisters, to be saints does not mean to be perfect. To be saints, means to belong completely to the Lord. And this is the meaning of this parable today. We are called to belong to him entirely. And we pray that the light of the truth of God today may light our soil, our heart, and we may produce 30, 60, 100. Amen.